We went from four balanced budgets to record deficits. The wars in Iraq and Afghanistan are going to cost four trillion dollars. If you're a young man or woman who has been moving into service and you're 20 years old because of the miracle of modern medicine, chances are pretty good you're going to live to be 80 plus years old. You're going to be able to care of that VA system for the next 60 years. They deserve our care and they deserve our support. They serve us with honor when we ask and when they come home, not to show our responsibilities to them. I voted against the war in Iraq and there weren't many of us who opposed it. Not because of some fascination with being a Democrat. The argument was, put this on a pause and let the weapons inspectors finish their work. An entirely reasonable position. I voted against the Bush tax cuts in 2001 and against the 2003, and on all three of the occasions you just heard, got up and said so on the House floor. And when President Obama, the leader of my party, extended the Bush tax cuts, I opposed them as well at that time. There was plenty of room in that budget for some modest tax cuts to middle income Americans during the Clinton years and at the end of the Clinton years. The idea that we would cut taxes by a trillion, three hundred billion dollars in 201, and another trillion dollars in 203, and go off the war in two years, economically never made any sense. So we find ourselves in this position, but I want to offer a couple prescriptions. First, lower the decimal level in Washington. This 24-hour news cycle is not helpful to the debate. This idea that one-third of the American people are Democrats and one-third are Republicans, and they can never budge off of any position that they previously embraced because theology governs the day, as opposed to fact-based knowledge. <coughs> when you look at where we are, think of it this way. If we could just get that unemployment rate back to the historic post-war normal of 4.5 to 5 percent, one-third of these deficits go away. Why? Because personal income tax revenues go up, cap gains go up, and pressure on social spending goes way down. Now, during the campaign, Governor Romney said accurately that there were 47 million Americans receiving food stamps. He's right. But let me say this to you. I have never met anybody in the course of a long career who has said to me, I can't wait to quit my job so I can get food stamps. That's the reality of the argument. This has been a tough time for the American family. This has been a very difficult time for them. We have some good news on the energy front if we do this right. It is the easiest way to restore the American manufacturing base. But can I say something? The president is correct when he says all of the above. An integrated approach. Now, for somebody like Rachel here, sitting to my left, getting out of East Hampton High School. When she began East Hampton High School, we were importing record number of barrels of oil every day. And she ends high school, let me give you a number. We will become the biggest oil producer in the world in 2022. The abundance of natural gas is why? with what's going to happen. Just as importantly, embracing green energy. Now, it doesn't work everywhere. The wind's got to blow, the sun's got to shine for it to work. But alternative energy is the way of the future as well. I call that to your attention because, once again, the minute that we talk about energy, there's instant opposition from some point. And when you consider the opportunity that avails, Submit this to you. Sending America's sons and daughters.